where it flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Father, I yield myself into your very capable hands. Therefore, wisdom and revelation will flow freely. Oh, will flow freely into the ears of your precious people. Father, I pray over every ear right now. I declare every ear is anointed to hear you. Every heart is good ground to receive you. Father, this is not a room full of religious people, but this is a room full of people who understand their covenant. Therefore, we thank you in advance for your answers, your miracles, your breakthroughs, your leading and your guiding God. We thank you that you will lead us in the way that we should go. And Father, we latch on to the covenant of guidance that we have with you. No weapon formed against this time shall prosper. Uh, Satan, you have no place, no plot in this service. We bind you right now in the name of Jesus. Loose the minds, loose the hearts, loose the, loose the, loose the people. And we plead the blood of Jesus over them. We declare they will get everything they came to receive. No distractions. I speak over every mind right now. It is uncluttered, unclouded, and uncrowded. The word of God, the incorruptible seed, will go in and make its way throughout every situation and circumstance into the lives of your precious people. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And XL Church said, Go ahead and shout about that, we. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Listen, before you take your seats, go ahead and find you two or three people. Love on them, encourage them. Let them know they're special to God and especially to us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. If you need a Bible, slip your hands up. Ushers can get you one. We want you guys to follow along with us as we uh, move through the Word of God. We just, uh, we just believe in this church uh, that we don't want to make it up as we go. We want you to see the Word of God on the pages for yourself so, so you can become a skillful believer who can take those words off of the pages and see them manifested into your everyday life. So follow along with us. If you have your Bible, uh, we can, if you don't have one, we can get you one. But if you have your cell phone or your iPad there, uh, follow along with us. Uh, we're in a, uh, I don't want to say a small series, it's a very big series, but we started a series and um, I sensed in the church uh, uh, that people were being weighed down. People were being stressed out and people were being intimidated uh, uh, and bullied by the enemy and a few areas or a few uh, highlights came to my mind uh, and one of those was worry. Worry. The Bible says, don't worry about tomorrow. Why? You don't know what it's going to bring. It says you have enough on your plate today. Only God knows what tomorrow brings. And the devil is proficient at having us look into the future, trying to predict the future, and we can't. So worry uh, is one thing we're combating in this series. And the title of the series was, is, is don't let it weigh you down. Don't let it weigh you down. The second one was fear. You know, fear, health scares, uh, potential generational uh, 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 diseases being passed down, uh, fear that your kid is going to go left when, you, when you're praying that they go right, fear that your, your, your kid may be confused. And, and or, you know, a lot of times for me, for, for me and Pastor Zelfia, uh, when our kids were, you know, finding themselves 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, kind of finding themselves, I, we, 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 there were questions we had for them, but we, didn't, we weren't ready for the answers. But we knew by the Holy Ghost that man, we, we, we got we to gotta, we gotta dig down in some stuff with them because, because we don't want the enemy, you know, cornering them and bullying them 
in a corner. But even as believers, as elders in the church, we were fearful of the, you're right, mom. <laughs> you're right, dad. Uh, I do drink every now and then. You're right, dad. Uh, I don't know how the Holy Ghost told you that, but I did puff, puff, pass, uh, in the, in, you know, outside the school. I, I did do that. And I know we knew the Holy Ghost was revealing it to us and so on and so forth and all this kind of stuff. But we had a fear of the truth. And we have a fear of the truth. You, 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 you allow the chains to remain. And Tasha Cobb says break every chain. <laughs> Not just some of them. We break every single chain off of the minds and the hearts of your people. So we had a fear of the truth. And, and, and thirdly, we had anxiety. Are we going to have enough when we retire? Are, 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 we, are, are we doing the right thing? Is Ari going to marry a good man? Is Marvion going to marry a good lady? Oh, 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 if, my God, you, you, you know, how long are our parents going to live? We got your mom, we got my dad. It's the only two we got. Uh, we got my mom, your dad, and your mom. How long are they going to live? When is that call going to come? When, when is grandma? And it's like, my God. Cast that stuff over on God, but if you don't cast it down, the enemy and his voice will, 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 will bully you to no end. So worry, fear, anxiety. The next one, stress. 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 Listen, you'll never make so much money that you don't have to believe God. There's people, there's people who could buy you, every person in this room, a half a million dollar house five times <coughs> per person. <laughs> and they blow their brains out. That's right. That's right. And they find themselves on drugs. Right. And they find themselves touching little boys and touching little girls. And they find themselves unhappy with one spouse so they get ten ladies on the side. By the way, a side chick is the least liked. Don't, 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 don't let nobody parade themselves as a side chick. Uh, uh, I, I think you want to stop saying that because he don't want to commit to you. You are the least like. You are a private chick that he don't believe you should come in public with him. So you don't need to. So you need to just stop that. Side chick, side chick. I'm a side chick. I, I, he buy me this. He buy me that. He do this for me. Do that for me. Yeah, yeah. You're the least liked. Why? He won't commit to you. No, let me let me let me let me let me come back here. So so stress, fear, anxiety, you 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 worry. You uh, but the but the, the the next one is doubt. You're always doubting everything. So hard to satisfy an overly suspicious person. You doubt the love that's coming towards you. You doubt, you just doubt everything. And, and, and these things weigh us down. And it's like gravity. Outside in my backyard, we got this, this thing called a pergola and this little thing in the back where we hang out. And, you know, I got two ceiling fans out there, but I had to get specific types of ceiling fans for the outdoors. I couldn't get the same kind that was on the inside, but, but even with the ones that I got for outdoors, I began to look at them, and, and, and I said, man, the blades are bowing down. The blades are not going down. And gravity is like that. It just keeps, it, 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 it just keeps pulling down, and, 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 and this weight, this worry, this fear, this anxiety, uh, of this doubt, what it does, you don't even know it's there. And it's just, it's, it's just it's bearing down on you. That's why you can't get a good night's sleep. That's why. That's why it's tense. You can't get a you can't get a a a a a a a a a a steady cycle of peace in your household in your relationships because there's something, some kind of tension, some kind of buckle in the towel. There's water underneath there, but you're afraid to lift that towel and see it. So what does it do? It weighs you down. A lot of us think, oh, drugs. A lot of us think, oh, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do that kind of stuff. I, I, I'm talking about that. But in addition to that, I'm talking about you, might have, you, you may feel like you married out of obligation. It's kind of quiet in here. <laughs> and you try to figure out why can't I get some kind of 
genuine, authentic, marital rhythm. Can I tell you why? You hadn't settled that question. And me and my wife didn't settle it. And in year seven, she said, I want a divorce. In ministry. Following the will of God. Preaching the word of God. She said, I want a divorce. I want out of here. You only married me because of X, Y, and Z. I said, my God, I, I married you because I, I love you. That was a lie. That was a flat out lie. <laughs> it, it was, well, I know you. Uh, I feel like we got something going here. And the people have said you had a baby out of wedlock, uh, the, the church folks. So I, so, I, so I guess I figured I need to go ahead and do the right thing because I promised myself that I wasn't going to do what my daddy did and my mama did. And when they got divorced, I promised myself when no kid going to grow up by they, without their dad. I promised myself that. And you know what? I was dodging my daddy and dodging my mama's divorce thinking I was falling in love with my wife. But, but I didn't fall in love with my wife until after she declared she wanted a divorce. Why? What, what, what did you fall in love with? Family. <laughs> the curse was not going to continue. Is, is, this, is, this, is this too honest for you? So, 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 so now I'm madly in love with my wife now. I, I mean, I, 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 and I'm an irresistible, irresistible participant in this union too. <laughs> she knows she can't find nothing better than this. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm no slouch now. I, I ain't, no, I ain't, <laughs> I ain't no slouch up in here, up in here. I, I, I know what I bring to the table. I know what I bring to the table for my wife and my family. But why do I bring that up? Because we don't think that's a worry or anxiety. But until you sit down and go, okay, let me tell you why I feel this way. Here's what I really feel happened when we got together. I really feel like we got together because of this. I really do. I really feel like that. Now, do I love you? Yes, I do. But we got to settle this, and we got to settle it now. I used to try to make my wife be something that she wasn't. She was like, am I the wife you want or this, this lady that you're talking about? Do you want that kind of wife? Because every time your mouth opens, you're describing something that I'm not. Or you describe your discontent with what I am. And I did that long enough. In year seven, she said, I'm not the one for you. You can't convince me that I'm the one for you. Why? You're always trying to make me be someone else. So what did that do? It weighed me down. And I was tense. And I would buy gifts. And I would lord my provision for her uh, over my marriage. I would lord me providing for my family over my marriage. But I'm telling you something right now. It was wearing me down. And it was not enough. And that enemy came. And he, just, he said, you know what? Enough's enough. Are you guys really in love? Let's see then. An honest conversation came forth. And it took the weight off. Can I be honest with you? I was terrified to talk about it. I was terrified because I know my wife don't lie. I know my wife don't, she, 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 don't, she don't cut corners. She don't, she don't suppress in the name of peace. She ain't going to do that. She, she, she's going to, well, so how do you feel about us? I know when I ask that question, I may get, you know, <laughs> if you keep going the way you're going, we won't make it another year. I, I, I know I may get that. Not that she's being, not that she's, I just know that, that, that God is in her and in the name of peace. She's not going to avoid marital conflict. She's going to talk about it, and she's going to bring her honest heart forth. That's why she walks in less stress and less anxiety than I do. Why? Because she, she gets it out. She talks about it. Amen? Amen? So the purpose of this series is for you not to let it weigh you down. Somebody said, what's it? You know. <laughs> you know. What's it? I know there's things my wife don't disclose to me that she only talks to God about. Yeah. I know that. I, and, and I'm no dummy to that. But she knows what weighs her down. And sometimes as spouses, we don't trust one another with that information. I don't know how you're going to take this. But I got to say this in order to keep the weight off of this union. Amen? Amen. Same way with your children. I got I to gotta, I ask you this, son. I got to ask you this, daughter. I got to ask you this. Why? Because there's, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a cloud that I see, but I don't want to, I don't want it revealed to me. You got to talk to him about it. Amen. Amen. Now, Matthew 11, Matthew 11, glory to God. Don't let it weigh you down. Amen. <clears throat> 
Somebody said, well, what's the answer? I said, well, the answer is Jesus. There ain't no way around it. <laughs> the answer is Jesus. Glory to God. Media, get this ready for me in the uh, message translation. Uh, we, 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 we hit the scripture last week. And I just want to review with it real quick. And then we're going to move into part two of the message. I pray God speaks to you. I pray the burden is lifted off of you this morning. Uh, Matthew 28. I'm sorry. <clears throat> King James Version first. Matthew 11, 28. Uh, 11, 28. I'm sorry. 11, 28. Come unto me, Jesus said. It's in the red. Jesus says, come to me. There's a certain trajectory we should have when burdens and yokes and weights and fears and doubts are laying us down. He says, come to me. All of you that labor and are heavy laden, and I, I who? Jesus, our Lord and Savior, I will give. Circle that word, give. You can't give anything that you don't own. Jesus is the owner of rest. He is the authorized distributor to his children, which is us. He's the authorized dealer to give it to us. But you, 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 he said, you can't get it running from me. You can't get it hiding from me. You got to come to me. He said, I'll give you rest. Verse 29, uh, take my yoke upon you. What kind of yoke do you have? He says, learn of me. Think of, think of how many people have went to school for eight years and have mastered their subject of expertise. And Jesus says, you've mastered all of that, but you need to learn of me. The Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. The same way you spent four years getting that BA degree, the same way you spent eight years getting that master's degree, the same way you spent getting your PhD, the same commitment you had to that, you need to make that same commitment to learn of me. So a lot of us, a lot of us learn church. We learn church as a child. We learn church as a, we learn church lingo, church, church antics. We learn all of that. But Jesus, listen, the reason that, that, that you have your money, you have your degree, and you, you have your little family, but it's still not a settling in that thing is because you didn't take time when you joined church, when you got born again, to learn of me. Next, let's, let's, let's keep going. Learn, learn of me. He's, he describes himself. He says, listen, I'm, listen, I'm meek. I'm lowly in heart. I'm not, a prideful, I'm not a prideful Lord. I'm lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your what? Souls. See, if you rest in your soul, you rest in your pocketbook. You rest in your soul, you rest in your marriage. You rest in your soul, you rest in your family. You rest in your soul, you rest, you, you rest knowing that your kids are going to be okay if you're resting in your soul. But if you're not resting in your soul, there's fear, doubt, anxiety, worry, all that kind of stuff that wants to bully us out of the peace of God. Next verse. He says, listen, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Let's see it in the message translation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just open your mouth and say glory to God. Hallelujah. Say, I am free. I am resting in my soul. Hallelujah. If you can't preach to yourself, if you can't preach to yourself and declare your peace, Declare your mind is clear. Declare you have clarity of mind and you bind cloudedness. You bind cloudedness. You bind cloudedness. You got to learn to preach to yourself. And this is not church I'm talking about. I'm talking about learning of Jesus. He says, learn of me. <clears throat> Next uh, message translation. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me. You got you to consecrate yourselves with Jesus. This is not getting away with God. This is just, this is just fellowshipping with amongst uh, like believers. We come together in corporate worship. But he says, he says what, what he's saying is, did you get away with me this week? Did you bring your burden, your yoke to me this week? Or were you so busy building your life that you're ignoring your soul? You try to build a rich life and your soul is parvish, it's going to catch up with you. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. See, a lot of us are exerting ourselves 
trying to build a life, building a life, not realizing you lost it at six years old. When did I lose it? When your uncle touched you and you didn't tell nobody. Or when daddy touched you and you didn't tell nobody. Or when the female uh, babysitter touched you and you hadn't told nobody. He says, listen, you got to get away with me and you can recover your life. You can recover your life from the divorce. You can recover your life from from a traumatic, piercing reality that visited your front door. He says, listen, get with me. Hang out with me and you can recover your life. He said, I'll show you how to take a real rest. I'll show you how to take a real rest. You're hitting your things to do list every single day and, and patting yourself on the back that you did all of that, but you didn't take a real rest. You, you did your things. You, did, you had your things to do list, but you don't have a things to be list. And I want to be close with Jesus. I want to be in peace. Things to be over things to do will win every single time. Nothing wrong with your little checklist. I'm not saying that. Nothing wrong with your point list. I'm not saying that. But I tell you what, a lot of people find this false security in just how diligent they are. But they're not resting in their souls. I came to tell you this morning, Jesus wants you to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. And just watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Unforced means void of human effort. Listen, I made A's and B's in school. The only reason I made B's is because I was a class clown. I loved math. Loved math. Could have went to Georgia Tech. I turned down Georgia Tech. Could have went to Georgia. Turned down Georgia because a fellow teammate of mine had went to North Carolina. I said, well, shoot, I, man, I, I just want to go, go somewhere where I know somebody. And I just took, I just took the thing and I, I went on with him. But, but why do I say that? You can have human effort to get good grades. You can have human effort to make a lot of money. You can have human effort to ascend in your, in, in your career. And he says, you, you, you're forcing it. He said, once you learn of me and learn how to take a real rest, I give you the unforced, or unforced rhythms. Rhythms. When you get in rhythm with God, you get in rhythm with grace, no fear, no worry, no anxiety, no doubt. It can't even attach itself to you. Why? You're in such a rhythm of resting and recovering your life and removing the claws and the chains from your soul that has attached themselves to you, some knowingly and some unknowingly, and you get a real rest with your Lord and Savior. But look, can I say this to you? The only people who come to a Savior are the ones who feel they need one. The only people who pursue the Savior for real rest and peace are the ones who feel they need a Savior for that. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you there's a freeness for us to walk in through the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, through the Prince of Peace. I hear that, Lord. (sighs) Peace is not a thing. Peace is not a place. Peace is not an event. Peace is not a time. Peace is a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. Oh, I just, I just get all my, my homeboys over here, and I, I'm, I'm really going to find some peace. I get all my girlfriends over here. I'm really going to find some peace. We just, we, 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 we just get away for 10 days. I'm really going to find some peace. Nothing wrong with that. But, 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 but Marco Island is not the peaceful place. Vegas is not the peaceful place. Pigeon Forge is not the police. The peace is a person. And that person is Jesus. And he says, learn of me. I'm right here. You don't have to travel to find peace. You're a born-again believer. I'm right here residing on the inside of you. All you have to do is believe that. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Don't let it weigh you down. Glory to God. <sighs> All right, let's move on to the message. Well, first, uh, Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Woo! 
I said, Lord, if it ain't encouraging your people, I just don't want to, I don't want to preach it. I don't want to play no games with nobody's soul, nobody's life. I know how, 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 how. <laughs> I probably got 10 boxes of personal development series that I paid $250 or more for. I probably got 20 boxes of books. Some are in the house, some are stacked up. And I thought I was crazy when it came to reading because I can read a book, 80 pages, get what I need, and I put it down. So, man, you got 220 more pages. I don't need the 220. I got exactly what I need from it. And, and, and I moved my life forward. The verbal diction of, of people and how they put stuff together, I don't care about that. Hit me where I live. And if you do that, 80 pages in, I get my answer. Man, I'm, 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 I'm good to go with the book. I say that to say this. And I still had worry. I paid $5,000 for a weekend with Stephen Covey before I moved down here. That's how serious I was about planning my life. That's how serious I was about getting my business in order. For two days, five Gs. That's how serious I was. We were about personal development. And guess what? Still led to almost a divorce. Guess what? Still didn't understand why my mom died of cancer, didn't get a chance to see her grandkids, didn't get a chance to see her boy, what he's doing now. Still didn't understand that. But I tried to work it off. I tried to perform it off. And what it was, it was a burden. It was a yoke. It was heavy. And I think about my grandparents, and I wonder how many weights and worries they took to their grave. I never asked my grandma, were you ever molested? I never asked my granddad, hey, were you, were you ever touched wrong or, or anything like that? I never asked him that. I didn't know to ask him that. But I wonder, and they had a great life, married 63 years, house paid for, land given away to us, all that kind of stuff when he went, went home to be with the Lord. But, but I, just, I just wonder how much weight people are taking to their grave when they need to talk about it, when they need to give it to Jesus. When they need to learn of him, they're in church. Learn of Jesus for the love of God. Learn of him. And he will teach us in the way we should go. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Philippians 4. Let's move through this thing. My gosh, 40 minutes. Oh. Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians 4 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. <laughs> let, not, let, 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 let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. I said last week, some people spend so much time not trying to be their mom and daddy in marriage, they forget to learn the person they're married to. I'll never be like my mom. I'll never be like my dad. Yeah, and you're going to find yourself divorced living like that. Learn the person that God brought into your life and fall in love with that person. But don't hate your daddy and mama so bad that you're not going to be them and you spend your entire marriage not trying to be them and wake up on to realize, I don't even know who I'm married to. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, uh, by prayer, time spent with God, supplication with thanksgiving. You'd be surprised how much worry falls off of you if you just pray over the food that's on your table. Lord, I thank you. You'd be surprised how much worry, anxiety, and fear and doubt falls off of you if when you hit that clock, you say, Lord, I thank you for this job. Why? I don't know what tomorrow brings. I don't know what's going on in the boardroom. I don't know what policy is going to change. But I'm, I'm, I'm training myself to give thanks and rejoice in you bringing peace to my soul. I thank you for this food, God. And your kid walks through, Lord, I thank you for, 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 for my children. Your spouse, walks, Lord, I thank you for him. I thank you for her. Lord, I just thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for, they, they run an errand for you. Lord, I thank you for a spouse who's willing to serve me. And, and, and you train yourself. And, and when you do that, you keep the claws out. Yeah. Right. He says through rejoicing and thanksgiving and supplication. That's the, 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 this is how we live as believers, to keep the weight off. Be careful for nothing. He says, let your request be known unto God, not your news feed on social media. I was talking to a spiritual daughter of mine. I was like, you know, I, boy, I tell you, you went off of social media. And I was like, man, how do you do that? 
She said, well, my life is more peaceful off of it. <laughs> now, I'm more focused. Now I get more things done off of that thing because it's, an, it's, it's the great agitator. You, you got your little job, and you're you thankful, you, thankful for your little job. You got your house, your car, until you hit that news feed, and you see, my God, he's got a brand new house there. My God, what are we doing with our lives? <laughs> but I thought about that because I was thinking, I was like, ah, uh, I like social media. I like the ministry tool of it. But, man, I, the phoniness and the people who don't understand uh, social media etiquette ain't got no street, street, streetness about them. Just don't jump on nobody's page and say what you want to say. Just don't come in, come in my comment section and just say what you want to say. Just don't do that. When you're a pastor, you ain't going to clap back. I got two hands. I know how to clap. I know how to clap now. I know how to clap. I know how to delete. I know how to get rid of you. But, but, but even in that, even in that, why am I even thinking that? So I started this little thing journaling my life, and I realized that my life is much more richer than any post I can put on social media. It's rich in God. And you start taking down small little victories and transcribing it. They say when you write, they say when you write and transcribe, it gets, it gets further down in you. You get a further understanding of it. But if you, you know, I tried to write something, write a, a, hundred, a hundred words or something, I said, my God, my writing is terrible. What has happened here? I used to hold a pen like this. Now I'm trying to hold it like this, and it looks like chicken scratch because this, this new age, you only type. But I thought about that. What brings, what brings non-peace into my life? What aggravates me, agitates me? Whatever those things are, I'm beginning to get them out of my life. Why? They're competing with peace. Let's keep going. I got some stuff for you. I think it's going to bless you. Woo! Glory to God. He says, make your request known to me, verse 7, and the peace of God. Tell me about that peace. It passes all understanding. It goes past your brain. We've had people whose spouses have passed. And they come to us and say, is something wrong with me? I said, huh? I just, is something wrong with me? I said, what are you talking about? Well, I'm, I'm uh, my grief level is on a level two. But I really wanted to be on a level 10 so I could feel like I'm really grieving. I said, you know why it's on a level two? Because Jesus has given you peace that passes all understanding and you have a thorough knowledge of where your spouse is and that knowledge in God that knowledge in Christ you have a thorough understanding that the God of comfort the God of love has your back and is bringing you peace watch this that's passing your understanding sweetheart no nothing is wrong with you now grieve properly now but nothing is wrong with you if you're on a scale of 1 to 10, you're grieving that too. When people think you should be falling all over the place. A peace that passes all understanding is what Jesus wants to give us to keep the weights off. We've learned thus far, peace is not a place. Peace is not a thing. Peace is not a gift. Peace is a person. And if you're going to have true peace, true peace in Christ... You, that, that passes your understanding in every situation and every circumstance that tries to, watch this, trespass on your peace. You got to know that Jesus is the person. He's the answer. Don't let anybody, anything, any government, any person, any church trespass on your peace. You keep your heart with all diligence. And you got to look at things and go, you don't belong here. The heck you doing here? You got to catch a thought and go, you don't belong up there. What the heck you doing? Well, what is it doing? It's trying to trespass on your peace. And you as a believer, you have a blood-bought right to walk in peace that passes all understanding and not allow this thing called life 
to weigh you down. Not allow those kids to weigh you down. Somebody said, somebody said I said, listen, I, I, I put a post about mothers and they invariably so somebody comes in my inbox and they want to say that I take joy in being a mother. I didn't, I didn't, what are you even talking about? I'm cheering the moms on. I really take joy. In, it's not a burden to me. Listen, listen, I got a wife. I got two kids. And I know when they were little and now that you can holler that mother stuff all you want. But I know when your tail needs a break from it. I know you love your kids. My wife loves my kids. But my wife would also walk in the house and go, I'm headed out. They stand here. I'm I'm, 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 they stand here. I'm, I'm heading out. If she don't love her kids, of course she loves her kids. She's got to recalibrate, refresh, recharge, and, 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 and why? To, 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 to maintain her peace. That's all I did was work 10 hours, come in, spend about an hour and a half with them, and, and call myself the champion of the house. I wasn't a freaking champion of the house. Are you kidding me? My wife would say, listen, just take them and go to McDonald's. Wow, there's something about a quiet, serene house, and she's not worried about juice, crackers, food, all that kind of stuff. Does she love? Look, I put my I put my wife's love for our kids up against any mother, and she wanted to break from it. There's nothing unholy about you moms wanting to break from your kids. Are you kidding me? No way. I mean, she's in a fantasy football league, and, and that league is going to go see the Dallas Cowboys. They're going to go up north for whatever game they choose to, to go up north and hang out in the snow and hang out in the cold and snuggle up and walk through the snow and throw snowballs. And she's going to be with the ladies that, 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 she's, that, that, that she's been doing this thing with for the last six or eight years. And she's going to be with them, and they're going to have fun. They're going to have a ball, and the kids are going to be back home. And she, she's not going to call one time to see how they're doing. And I don't think she's a bad mother. She don't. Why? Because I champion that. I want her to refresh. I want her to recalibrate. I want her to recharge. And I want her to keep any trespassers out of her peace. Sometimes that's just hanging out with ladies, just talking about nothing. Us too. Us too. Now, there's never a scenario where I got to get away from my wife to build myself up. There's never a scenario where I got to get away from, she got to get away from her husband to build herself up. Because I'm her number one builder upper. Mentally and physically. (laughs) Number one builder upper. I'm your stress reliever. We release some stress around here. In order for us to remove the weight, there's got to be a resisting. Of the opposition. You got to resist what's trying to impose itself upon you. A lot of times unknown, unknown outcomes can try to impose itself on you. You know, they say divorce occurs three years in a person's heart before they make the decision. They're, they're, they're just working through the implications. The theological implication. The family implication. The financial implication, the community implication. How, how, they're working through it, and once they check them off, they make a decision sometimes that shocks the world. Like, my God, where did that come from? Oh, I've, I've had this on the rotisserie of my mind for three years. <clears throat> James 4. James 4. As believers, we got to learn how to oppose. We got to learn that, 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 that word, anxiety, fear, doubt, uh, unknown outcomes, they're, 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 they're ultimate trespassers on our peace. Ultimate trespassers on our peace. Don't allow anything to trespass on your peace. James 4. Glory to God. The word of God builds us up. That's what it's supposed to do. The word of God builds us up. Can I get James 4 on the screens and get it ready for me in the uh, message? James 4, uh, verse 7. Uh. <clears throat> Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. 
Watch this now. Oppose him. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Notice the course of combat with a believer is not retreating. The devil, you don't, you, I'm not going to have uh, uh, trenches in the sand of you pushing me back. I'm not going to be on my heels. I'm going to be on my toes leaning forward. My shoulders are not going to be back. They're going to be squared up against you, and I'm going to resist you. I'm standing my ground. I'm resisting you. I'm not retreating. It says when we resist him, he flees. Flees from where? He stops trespassing on our peace. And you got to resist him. And you can be far in love with your spouse, and, 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 and they chew an apple like Ed the horse. You love him. You love her. And, 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 and what you got to do is you got to resist the devil. Don't attack them. That devil is, is gnawing on you every bite, every talk for the love of God. You're on the phone with your spouse and, and she called you and she takes 10 seconds to say something because she's talking to the other ladies in the background. And I say hello and I just sit there for 10 seconds while you're talking to the ladies you're talking to. And then the 11th second you say something, the first 10 seconds, I got to resist the devil. If I do not do that, I'm going to say something crazy. But even in that 10 seconds, the enemy is trying to trespass on my marital peace. And I got to resist him and say, okay, she called me. She must want something. And that's not time to teach or instruct. Listen, when you call me, have something to say to me. Just, 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 just chill out. And, and I do the same thing. But you got to resist him. You got to resist him. Now, you ever... Uh, You ever been resisted? I'm like, ooh, boy, God is good. Da, da, da. I'm putting this light switch on, and here come them little leggies walking past with Puma sports bra. I'm talking about my wife. Switch on by. Shucks. Ooh. All right, let me go ahead and get a flat screwdriver here. She's going, all right now, you better watch it now. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> but she's getting ready to go to the gym. She got a time schedule. All right now, you better sit down somewhere now. Ooh, I'm ready to get in that gym. I'm ready, I'm ready to get in there. I'm just ready. Woo, it's leg day. Ah! <laughs> ah, I see you. It's all right now. Okay, let's, let's stop it. And boy, I go to reach, I go to grab, I go to hey, 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 hey. Say, hey, 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 I gotta get to the gym. I gotta, I, 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 I gotta go. I said, what? I said, you kidding me? I said, I, I gotta go. I gotta get. I gotta go. This morning, she got up. She has worked out. She, she got up to work out. All that kind of stuff came back to the house. But what I'm saying is, she's a workout fanatic, and she, and, and and things just don't interrupt that. But she, she. Watch this now. I walked away. Feeling resisted. I was resisted. Guess what I said to myself? I gotta try another way with that. <laughs> That's how the devil thinks. You don't resist him one time. You, 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 he walks away saying, oh, oh, okay, all right, I'm coming back. I'll recalibrate, I'll regroup, I'm coming back at you. I'm, I'm coming back, right back at you. Now, now, now watch this now. Watch this now. He don't come right back at me when she comes back through with the little leggies and the little Puma sports bra. He comes at me and he says, I don't know if she really wants you or not. I'm trying to figure out why she's so busy that, hey, at the spare of the moment, it can't be a moment of spontaneity before she heads to her. Why is that? Does she really? I mean, is lights down, candles? Is that, is that what it takes with her? I mean, what are you doing wrong? And now all of a sudden, I got to resist him again. Why? Because she float right back through with the little legs and the little woman. You, 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 you ain't gonna mess with me? No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> See, I'm not resisting now. Yeah. I'm good. You, you, you go ahead and hit your schedule. Go, go, go ahead and do it. And, and man, I'm. <laughs> I got the BBs. 
standing there in pride. Standing right there in pride. So James 4, 8 says, <laughs> I mean, God forbid we be honest in church. James 4, 8 says, resist the devil and he will flee. <laughs> you know how it is when you, you, when you young folks, you, you're not married yet. You're in bed and you're being resisted and you just kind of turn over and you're just kind of you're mumbling and all this kind of stuff. La, la, la. Instead of just humbling yourself and say, let me go back and just try it again here. I mean, I, I, I'm shooting, but I can't wake up with the... Yeah. Humble myself here. Yeah. This, is the, this is the anxiety and the worry and the stress I'm talking about. Now, I've been married going on 23 years. So I know what I'm talking about. And there's people in this room that married 30, 35, 40 years, and they'll tell you the devil will talk to you as long as you don't resist him. Now, what happens when you resist him? He leaves. Why does he leave? Listen, when Jesus came up on that vile spirit right there in the desert, he looked at him and said, I know your power. I know your word. You are the prince of peace. I tell you what, we know the outcome of this when you open your mouth. So much so, we're going to choose our destination. Let's see, there's a tree, there's a lake, there's grass, uh, let's see, there's a donkey, there's a ram. Uh, cast us, put us in those pigs over there. Why? We have no doubt about when you open your mouth, this prince of peace that lives on the inside of you. We have no doubt of the power that resides in you to deal with devils. And we don't like to say devils, but I tell you what, I've had devils tell me to kill myself. I had devils tell me you won't make it to year 30 in your marriage. I've had devils tell me, All right, well, your mama, your mama died of breast cancer. Maybe it'll skip over to you. I, 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 that may happen one day, you know. I've had devils tell me to do that. And the Bible says in James 4, resist him. And he will flee. We've got to teach our young kids this. You're teaching them about education. You're teaching them about the importance of it. But you don't realize the same devil that harasses you. As a grown man or a grown woman, can you imagine what he's doing in those back rooms? We learned a long time ago, our beacon of hope is not in grades. Our beacon of hope with our children isn't you coming up saying, the devil is harassing me. I don't feel pretty. I thought about doing this. I thought about doing that. Oh, did you? Let me teach you how to resist the devil, sweetheart. Let me teach you how to re resist the devil, young man. Let me teach you how to do that. Why? Because it's weighing you down. And you're impressing mom and daddy with your grades. And you're like, for the love of God, take your eyes off the grades because there's something harassing the fire out of me. Teach your kids how to resist the devil. You know how mean kids are in, in a group in church? They, they, they ain't got to be in school. Yeah, when, when a group of them get, they are mean sometimes. They'll wear your kid down. Zari said, I don't want to go to school no more. I want to get on the school bus. I said, why? This little guy just wearing her down. I said, you know what? <laughs> Let me just get up to this bus stop and see what's going on. How many people knowing that? Get up to the bus stop, still don't have it. You're going to end up going to jail. <laughs> what helps it? We as parents got to resist the devil. He'll flee. I'm going to teach my kids to resist the devil, and he will flee. And I'm also going to teach them, I'm going to teach them, I'm going to teach them, I'm going to, I'm going to teach them how to be like Teflon. Not combative, just, hey, man, hey, hey, it's not a kingdom issue, keep moving. Sometimes you got to laugh at people just point at them. <laughs> That's a good one, boy, you funny. Girl, you funny now, you funny. <laughs> boy, you are. <laughs> you say to yourself, there's no 13th grade, I'm headed to Stanford, and, uh, <laughs> Let's see, how, let's see how much that clown stuff gets. Yeah. And, and you got to know that about yourself. Yeah. You, you, you got a four-year holiday in high school, but mine's going to keep going. I, I'm headed on the, 
I'm headed on to uh, Stanford University. I'm headed on to, to Dartmouth. I'm, I'm, I'm headed on to Brown. I'm headed on. Why? Teach your kids to know, to, to have confidence in themselves, who they are, what they're doing, how they're being raised. And they're not, there's nothing loadable about being a born again, believing young man or woman who loves God. You're getting good grades. You, you stay a, good, got a good family, good house. There's nothing wrong with that. But my, my son came to me and said, Dad, I don't have no testimony. And I need a testimony. I mean, I stand at the bus stop. I'm like, man, I, I, need, to be, I need to be dodging some bullets. And, and, and uh, so I said, well, I said, you, you, you're in the suburbs, sir. You, 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 you don't, you. <laughs> now, I, now, 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 hey, how many people know that's harassment? Yeah. Yeah. You think it's abnormal for you to have this? Yeah. You, and you need a testimony? What, what are you talking about? You got great parents. You're not saying other parents are bad. I'm just saying the devil, we got to teach our kids and ourselves and our families how to resist him, and he will flee. He, he, he will talk you clean out of fellowship with your family if you don't resist him. And get you high and mighty like you all this and that. And it's like, you're not all this and that. Are you kidding me? Their problems are visible. You know how to manage yours very well. Let me get back up there. First Peter, real quick. We got 16 minutes. First Peter, we are, we are getting tools on how to live this life. We want an authenticity to our fellowship with God. You're not looking at a pastor or pastors who don't have problems uh, every now and then. You're not looking at somebody who hadn't dealt with stress. You're not looking at somebody who hadn't dealt with worry. You're not looking at somebody who hadn't dealt with anxiety. You're looking at people who are flawed just like you. And God chooses flawed people to preach his word. But please don't charge to us to be perfect. When you get an idea of perfection about yourself, the Bible says, before the great fall, you get in great pride. Boy, I was in great pride concerning my kids. God told me to be more careful. Stuff come forth, I go, that don't pertain to me. That don't pertain to us. I'm not saying God's looking to put something bad on you. Foolish is bound up into the heart of a teenager. We're totally exempt from that. And then you start to realize, wait a minute. Uh, wait a second. Hmm. I remember she took Kool-Aid and just poured it on the, uh, the thing there. I remember he, you, you start remembering the foolish things that they've done or said. And it was great pride. And I was on the road and my 14-year-old son took a club wagon the size of a Suburban and decided to ride with him and his friends and turn up to Little John and Eastside Boys, <laughs> head buster, a little scrappy, no license, no nothing, in middle school, I think. Uh, uh, might have been j just going to the ninth grade. And what was that? My God, I'm in church. I'm a leader in church. I ain't doing nothing crazy in front of you. I ain't drinking. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't hitting your mom and all that kind of stuff. And you decide to, when we out of town, to take a big 4,000-pound club wagon, whatever that thing is, and drive around, and you're down on St. Augustine Road from the house. How did you, how did you? Why, why, would you, why would you do that? Somebody say foolishness. foolishness. Straight A's. <laughs> Straight A's. Kind, you see him. Gentle, meek, tender heart. You, you see him. He was just like that. <laughs> well, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> Couldn't do no wrong. But, 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 but man, the foolishness showed up. <laughs> why? Because it's bound there. And we all have foolish acts. Say stuff you know you ain't got no business saying. First Peter 5. Here we go. Now for the message. 13 minutes left. <laughs> and you know, let's write this down. Worry can't help tomorrow's problems. But it can remove today's peace. Worry can't help tomorrow's problems. But I tell you what it can do. It can remove today's peace. <clears throat> First Peter 5. Hmm. Verse 6. <clears throat> Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Notice the posture God wants us in. The posture of humility. 
under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. A lot of things we worry about uh, are not coming in our time. It's coming in due time, his time. Verse 7. Casting. I'm glad, it, I'm glad it didn't say cast. Casting implies this is, this is something that be, the believer is going to always have to do. Casting all of your cares upon him. Why? He cares for you. Cares, in your notes, is an over-engrossing mental affair. And right now in this room, some people have an over-engrossing mental affair with their jobs, job security, with their bodies and their health, with their children, teenagers in this room, some kind of care. And if you're not careful, it becomes over-engrossing. Then it becomes an affair. The key word is affair. Why? Because you sneak around life with it. You sneak around the house with it. You sneak around in the midst of your family with it. And it's wearing you down. It's an affair. It's a mental affair. You remember that, that, uh, that Denzel movie, uh, Out of Time? Do you remember when he was trying to hedge off that fax that was coming through on him? When he was like, oh, they send the fax, and he ran to the fax machine. And boy, he's at the phone, he's, he, he, and he's trying to stop it. It's like, man, what? What in the world? You got an affair with this thing on the side. This thing what? This thing that you're doing wrong. It's over-engrossing. It's a mental affair. And, 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 and God wants us to cast that over on him. Yeah. Now, uh, unpack this. Care can be an object of concern or attention. A care can absorb all of one's attention. Boy, I've been there. Now, how many of you remember when you was in school, uh, we used to get these things called paddlings? Okay. Miss McKinley had one with her name on it. And, and, she, and she could bring the fire. Paddlings. Actually, a, a paddling. Think of that. Now you can't say nothing to your kids in public. You go to jail. But a paddling in the middle of the day, I know I'm going to get, I can handle that. But if it's 3 o'clock and I'm waiting on the bus and I do something crazy, da, 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 see, I, wouldn't, I really wouldn't class count. I was the guy who talked the guy into taking his shirt off and running across the football field while the, the game is going on in 20-degree weather. I was that guy. But anyway, she said, Derek, did you do that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., see me. McKinley is waiting on you. Trust me, you're going to get a paddling. How many people know the school bus ride? Yes. This thing is absorbing all of my attention. Yes. You, you get at home, you ain't tell your parents about it. It's, a, it's, it's absorbing all of you. You go to sleep, it's absorbing all of your attention. You get, on, you get the bus stop and you're thinking about that dog on paddle. It's absorbing all of your attention. Somebody said, who's like that? IRS. <laughs> when the IRS gets on you, buddy, it, it, it's like, man. I remember one time we, we, we had sold some stuff, did some stuff, took a big risk with some money in, in, in Atlanta, da, 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 and the money went down, that thing bottomed out. And, 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 and I, seen, I seen a Comcast guy out there on, the, uh, on our street, on a little lift up there by the pole. And I said, shoot, I can't tell my wife. No, it was Georgia Power. I said, shoot, I, I done paid the light bill. Now, I know it's tight around here, but I got money. So I'm seeing him from the top floor. That car is tearing me up. Man, if that guy hit that switch and drive off, and we are without lights. It's going to be H-E double hockey stick up in here. Because I done told her everything taken care of. And that care is tearing me up. It's, it's, it's absorbing all of my attention. And I walk out there and I say to the guy, hey, uh, hey, what, what, <laughs> what are them Falcons going to do this week? It's like, uh, I, I don't know, man. I'm really not a sports fan. Da, da, da. I say, hey, uh, what are you doing up there? <laughs> oh, we're just, we're just fine-tuning things up here. Da, da, da. And I walk back in the house. The care was gone. But how many people know it absorbed all of my attention? And that's what the devil wants to do with our peace. When he trespasses upon our peace, it's that one thing, those two things, those three things, or something from your doggone childhood is absorbing all 
of your attention. And it's like you're not free. We're not naturally wild as human beings, just doing wild stuff like I did in Charlotte. I was wild in college. I said, how many guys, how many guys think that when I stop right here on John Belk Freeway, how many guys believe that in this 4 a.m. morning that I can roll from one side of the interstate to the other side of the interstate and no car will get me? How many of you guys believe that? You won't do it. You won't do it. Stop this doggone car. Let me show y'all how brave I am. And roll from one side of John Belk Freeway to the other side. Hop back in the car. Go, 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 go. And you, 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 you're stupid. <laughs> I, wasn't built, I, I, I wasn't built to do that. Chug a lug and liquor, running around, man to man, I mean, from man to man, from woman to woman, throwing your body. You weren't built that. That's, that's wild. There's something bothering you that you can't settle. And you need validation from the world. And the Prince of Peace says, I'm the person you should be coming to. You're not going to get it with them. All they're going to do is watch you lose your license, watch you lose your virginity, watch you mess your life up, and they're going to laugh at you. You got to resist the devil to protect your peace. Amen. Now, what is it like to carry, try to carry things we're not built to carry? I'm ready to show you. In this bag, I'm going to lay it here on the floor. This is us, right? That's us trying to carry. That's our carrier. A lot of us are trying to carry stress. And 1 Peter 5 says, you're not built to carry that. But we say, ah, I'm good to go. I'm educated. I can handle it. A good night rest to get it off me. All right? And you put the stress in your little carry bag. Storms. When storms come, and they will, Jesus says two types of houses. One that was built on the rock, one that was built on the sand. You built your house on me, storm comes, it's going to withstand the the, 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 the wind, the beating, the rain, the water. But if you built it on sand, just church lingo. Come on. No time with God. When a storm comes, a piercing reality. You know what a storm is? It's an interruption in a normal atmosphere. Hurricanes, not normal. It's an interruption, though. And it's coming with wind and force and everything else. Storms come. We said, shoot, I can handle that. Got to my spending time with God. I ain't got to do that. I got a good job, good career. Hey, I'm good to go. Fear? I ain't got no fear. Until that white coat sits down with you and say, do you got a minute? Your results came back. Fear. And we try to carry this fear. Fear that my daughter's not going to do this. Fear that my child's going to turn out this way. Fear that I'm going to lose my job. Fear that I don't have enough money to retire. All of this fear, fear that I'm going to be controlled when I get married, fear of fear, 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 fear that fear that the government's going to be overtaken and, and all of this kind of stuff. Get ready for Armageddon and all this kind of stuff. And we just live in fear and we try to carry that fear. And guess what? We seclude it. We conceal it. And we present bad boys and bad girls. But in reality, you ain't got no bite to your bark. Worry. Listen, nobody in this room is exempt from none of these. Worry. But it seems like she don't have it or they don't have it. Well, some people are better at concealing them than others. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A little money, a little, little, little roof over your head, a uh, 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 little, little decent marriage. You'll think none of these apply to you. But I tell you what, worry. The reason he said, listen, don't even think about tomorrow. Lose anxiety because this is a real thing. Some people worry when they send their kids off to school. Did you send your angels out? Yeah. That's all you can do. I don't want the world to swallow them up. I don't want the world to do this to them. I'm going to conceal them. I'm going to, listen, I protect my daughter's purity. I protect my son's purity. But here's what I know. At some point, you got to get out there. And you're going to be without mommy and daddy. At some point, you're going to have to defend your faith. At some point, you know, you know, you're going to realize you're not, the, you're not the baddest and the brightest in this group. At some point, you got to, and, 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 and what is that? You've you got to remove that kind of worry. Teach your kids how to make sound decisions. Teach them how to go to God. 
Teach them, show them your imperfections. Tell them about it. Hey, Amen. We can, we can keep this worry at bay. <clears throat> but this is us trying to carry them. Right? <laughs> Here's one. Doubt. Sometimes body image is the most stressful, doubtful thing people carry. So they invent compensation clothing. You want to pull all that in something, we'll create something to just, just pack it all in there. And you, and you can go ahead and you can go ahead and go, because I, I really doubt, I really doubt, I, I, I really doubt that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Ain't nothing wrong with looking, you know, you know, clean and all that kind of stuff. But just make sure that that stuff is not your God. And doubt can come in, man. Doubt is simply this. Doubt is the root word for double, double-mindedness. God, do you love me, dude? Don't you love me? God, why did you do that? Whew, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We got to stop as a body rushing people to peace and not allow them to process what just happened. Ooh, 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 ooh thank you, Lord. What does that do? You robbed me of my humanness. I know, there's, I know there's peace that passes all understanding. I know I got to cast my cares. But if you're an unskilled believer dealing with somebody who just went through a traumatizing event or they're facing a piercing reality, your counsel will try to rest them to peace, peace in God. And you rob them of processing the thing like a human being. I don't believe that. I don't know if that's in the word. Go read your Bibles. Mark 4, uh, verse 35, when the storm came, Jesus, listen, man, I'm tired. I've been laying hands on folks. I'm preaching. Man, man, let me get in this boat. I'm going to lay down. I'm going to get me some sleep. I'm tired. He's humanness. What's he showing them? I'm, I'm, I'm human too. John the Baptist got killed, beheaded, and he wept. Humanness. On the cross, God, why have you forsaken me? Doubt. Questions from our Savior. Humanness. But we got to allow people to process storms. Process piercing realities. Listen, why? Because I trust the Prince of Peace in you. It's a person. I'm not going to rush you off for a two-day getaway to deal with this thing. I'm not going to tell you to take two weeks from your job. If you want to, take it. But I'm not going to rush the process in the name of getting you to peace. A lot of times in trauma situation, peace, the attaining of peace is on that person's timetable. Not what we feel they should be. Why? They're processing through this thing. The wise, the unanswered questions. They, they're trying to figure out, well, well, why is this? Why is that? And if you come in and insert oh, the, the peace that has all understanding, God wants to give it to you. They already know that and, and, and they know that peace is a person, but, but, but don't rob them of their humanness. Rushes, rushing them to peace. Thank you, Lord. So he says, cast these over. Why do I need to do that? Because you're not built. You're not built to carry it. You, you can't even handle it. God says you can't handle it. He said, now, if you cast them over on me now, I'm much more sturdier with this stuff. You take your doubt. You take your worry. You bring it over to me. Cast all that anxiety on me. Why? I am, I am wired. I am wired to carry this stuff. I am built to carry this stuff. But you're not. And I'm going to take it. I'm going to zip it up under my covenant with you. I'm going to take it away from you. And I'm going to carry it for you. And God says, I don't bend and I don't break. I don't bend and I don't break. There's no doubt, no fear in me. None of that whatsoever. He says, I'm built to carry this for you. You're not built to carry this. So you got to cast, you got to, you got to, you got to cast those cares over on me because you can't carry them. Or what happens if I try to carry them? They will tear you apart. They will tear you apart piece by peace. And let me tell you something. Don't try to beat your chest and strategize your way out of a situation when you know you can't handle this. You know you're not built to carry it. The devil's goal is to keep you from believing God again. 
man, I, I don't believe God. I tried that, and it didn't, didn't work for me. Da, da, da. Oh, you tried to, you tried to carry it, and it didn't work. Well, you weren't supposed to do that. Well, that bag you got, I, it's, it's happened to me ten times over. Oh, okay. Guess what this bag represents, though? It represents a person who would not cast, a person who, instead of casting, they tried to carry. And let me tell you something. I've tried it. I've tried to carry things, and I realized real quick, why are you snapping like that? Why are you so uptight? Why are you so tense? Why do you think this white person don't like you? Why do you think this race don't like you? Why do you think this person is racist? Why do you think that? Because you're trying to carry anxiety that you weren't built to carry, buddy. And God says, man, look. <sighs> Derek, your parents did get divorced. And I'll say this to you. You did get hurt in church. You did. Somebody touched you and they shouldn't have touched you when you was a young baby, young, young man, young woman. They shouldn't have did that. And I know it's waiting. And I know your mama died from this and your grandmama died from this and, you, and the devil wants to tell you, it's going to hit you too. God says, Give it to me. That's a care. That's an overgrossing mental affair. Give it to me. Why? I'm built to carry you. And if you do that, if you learn to give it to me, listen to me. When we learn to give it to God, we put the provision for worry, fear, Stress, doubt, storms. We put that provision in God's bag. <laughs> because I don't have the proper provision to, care, to, to, to get me through this. I want to say this to you. If you've been divorced and you got kids from that divorce, let me say this to you. God wants to carry your fear. He wants to carry your doubt. You're, you're lovable. You're still beautiful. You're still worthy. He just chose that he didn't want you. Yeah. Or she's choosing, I don't want you. Cool. That's okay. Somebody else will find value in me. Right. But, but, but you not wanting me is not going to rent space in my mind and my soul. And I'm not going to rush out here and get my heart broken again because I'm trying to prove a point to you. No, no. I'm casting that over on God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Listen, and you know, no matter what it looks like, God can handle it. A man says, I really love my wife. Well, tell her you're scared then. <laughs> tell her when you're scared. I really love my wife. Well, tell her what your daddy did to you. I really love my husband. Tell him that you're scared. Yeah. Scared of what? I'm scared to submit to you. Why? I, I haven't done anything to you. I know you haven't. But my daddy did. I know you haven't, but my last husband did. Tell him that if you love him. <clears throat> Listen, the greater the care, the bigger your God. So don't succumb to the size of the problem because the problem, the care, the issue will always succumb to the size of your God. The size of your God. Listen, when people are going through their storms in life and they're drowning in the divorce, they're drowning in a battle for custody for their, ki custody for their kids, they're drowning because you, you, they did something wrong and they, they, they may go to jail, they may go to prison, they're drowning in it. Listen, when people are drowning in the storms of water, don't describe the water to them. They know they're drowning. What do I describe? Describe their God to them. Provoke the power of the new birth in them. And let them know God can handle that. Let them know if, 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 if God is for you, who can be against you? Yeah, but people are saying, they say, they say listen, that committee called they, 
they can't deliver you. Yeah, but they're going to say, I don't care what they say. They ain't paying my mortgage. I don't care what they say. They ain't putting food on my table. Listen, they will let you down every single time you get in a storm. But your God, the all-knowing one, is not going to let you down. And I came to tell you, God can handle it. Do not live life with your brakes on. Inertia, the tires, the, the, the brakes are squeaking on the track. I'm telling you, it's time to go full regalia in God. <laughs> Release your money to him. Don't be fearful no more. Release your marriage to him. Don't be fearful no more. Release your kids to him. Don't be fearful no more. Dedicate them back to him. Don't be fearful. Well, I didn't get a chance to dedicate my baby back to the Lord. Well, dedicate your 18-year-old back to the Lord. Yeah. Matter of fact, one day we just, may, we just may do that with the youth. We just may do that. Why? Because we're going to resist him. He's got to flee. He's got to leave your babies alone. He's got to leave our babies alone. He's got to leave your house alone. He's got to leave my house alone. He's got to leave your pocketbook alone. He's got to leave our pocketbook alone. We got to resist this joker, and he, he will flee. Why? He understands the power that we walk in. Hallelujah. I got four more lines, boot. Just four more. It's going to take five minutes. Okay. Uh, Luke 11. Right, grown man, you got to get permission from your wife. She, brother, you. you, you. <laughs> you ever seen your spouse with a fake laugh? You ever seen him with a fake laugh? <laughs> Oh, God. We joking. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, that's how I want you to be with the devil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, you want me to say that to him? Are you serious? I love that, man. I ain't going to say that to him. <laughs> oh, go back there and berate my kids like that because of one little thing they did wrong? No, I'm not going to take the phone. I'm not going to take the PlayStation 4. I'm not going to take the keys. from. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm just going to teach them how not to do it again. <laughs> You're crazy, devil. Gosh. Oh, my God. Help me. You're crazy. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Do what? Yes. Do what now? Gossip about <laughs> I'm not a malice creator. God hates that. Are you serious? I'm not going to talk about nobody when they're down like that. I'm not going to rejoice at the misfortune of others, even if, if it's my ex-wife or ex-husband. Who's, 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 whose last marriage failed, uh, even if they lost their job, I'm not going to reach. That's how you got to do it. But I tell you what, it's not just the devil we got to resist. It's the Pharisees too. Verse 39, Luke, Luke 11, 39. And the Lord said unto, <coughs> unto his Pharisee, now do you Pharisees make, verse 39, 1139, now do you Pharisee make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. My grandma used to say, Derek, before you get on anybody else's porch, make sure yours is clean. <coughs> verse 40, you fools. Did not he that made did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? But rather give alms of, of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for you tithe, you have action, you have self-effort with mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought you these ought you to have done and not to leave the other one undone. Verse 43, woe unto you, Pharisees, for you love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and the greetings in the markets. Verse 44, he's, he, I mean, he's on them now. Why? Why is he on them so hard? Because a lot of times we're resisting the devil and right behind it, a doggone deep believer is reminding us again of him. And exalting, well, I never went through that. I'm trying to figure out why you're going through it. My kids never had that situation. Are you a good parent? Are, are you parenting right? Are you praying enough? My God, are you in church? What's going on with you? Pharisee mindset. What want to you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites? 
For you are as graves which appear not. Listen, Pharisees are walking around in grave clothing. Spiritually dead. Appear not. And the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Verse 45. Then answered one of the, one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, uh, thus saying you reproaches, reproacheth, reproacheth us also. Verse 46. And he said, Woe unto you also, you lawyers, smart mouth. For you laid men with burdens grievous to, to be born, and you yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. You place demands on believers. You place you, you you demanded them to pass the test that you haven't passed yourself. You religious Pharisee. I see so many people claim they got the spirit of their father, and I watch them interacting and stuff. Father, spiritual father, whatever. And I say to myself, No, you don't. You're a Pharisee. No, you don't. You, no, no, you don't. Because he would never carry himself like that. He said, warn to you, or for, for you, you build a sep- uh, uh, sepulchers, sepulchers of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Think about that. Now, what, what is he saying? He's saying as a body, people are resisting the devil. And we got to stop trying to give them the shirt off our back, and we're butt naked with anointing. Stop demanding of people to come up to a godly standard that you're not living yourself. If you get a tattoo, you ain't anointed. Stop it. I want to get a tattoo of my wife's birthday, my mom's birthday, my wife's birthday, my daddy's birthday, Marvin Tate's birthday, and Zoe's birthday. Put right here, birthday, and put date of birth, and, and, and put right here. The dog going. I will do it. But guess what? I don't need no Pharisee coming to me saying, "I don't know if you're anointed now." You know if I'm anointed, huh? Well, by their fruits you'll know. As we resist the devil, listen, Pharisees, don't partner with him. Exhale Church is not about that. What are we? We are a body of believers, our five E's. We encourage one another now. We enrich one another. We empower one another. We don't see one another down and go over there and describe the water to somebody who's drowning or, or poke at the wound. We encourage them. We don't want a body full of Pharisees. Why? The weight that they're carrying is enough as a parent. Don't go over there talking about your parenting skills and all that kind of stuff. The weight is enough. The, the incident is enough with your teenager. Yeah, they did it. Yeah, they got caught. But for the love of God, let that be the weight. But don't you Pharisees walk up to them, reminding them of what they should have did to avoid it. Amen? Amen. Go over to God. Next week, we're going to pick up. We're going to pick up. And the title is going to be Dealing with the Storm. Dealing with the Storm. And from now until next week, I want you to remain in God. (laughs) Remain in God. Why? The devil wants to invoke a violent disturbance on our peace. Remain in God. Pray over your kids. Let that be it. Reveal it to your parents. Don't try to carry it. Reveal it to God. Don't try to carry it. Listen, God is not on vacation. God is always 24-7 ready for us to cast those cares over on you, over on him. He's ready for us. Well, you're blessed by the word of God. Let's stand for our feet. Hallelujah. Let me get my prayer counselors down front. Glory to God. Don't let it weigh you down. A lot of what's weighing us down is just a simple phone call to your parents or your relatives or your uncle. Just, just, just call them. Get the weight off of you. Just, just give them a call and say, man, that $500 you owe me, forget about it. Because if, if I keep thinking about the $500, I ain't going to come to no family.